If you're anything like me, you're in the midst of chasing greatness. You're seeking another level in your life or your relationships or your finances or your career or your health. And you're like, man, I, I gotta get to the next level. Greatness is not about money. Greatness is not about fame. Greatness is not about the big house. It's about that feeling. It's about that emotion that we all crave and want to say, I build my potential. And the last I checked, you and I weren't there yet. There's another level that we've got to attain to do that. It's becoming the best version of myself. It's about how good can I become? I know you might be on the bottom of the barrel, you might be at the top of the mountain. Wherever you are, there's always another level. It's time to go out and be great today. Welcome back everyone to the Todd Durkin Impact Show. I am fired up today. This is the recap, my top takeaways from the series we've had called Chasing Greatness. Thank you, first off, for all of the great comments uh, on our guests from the last seven weeks. Uh, Drew Brees, Chase Daniel, Daniel Camarena, Brett Rippon, Zion Clark, First Lieutenant Riley Compton. We've had some amazing guests on the last seven weeks, and uh, I had a chance to really go through and digest my top takeaways. And I want to share them with you today. And part of it's going to be a, just a heartfelt share with you about my takeaways. And part of it's going to be coaching. How do you take and extract out the takeaways and actually apply it to your life? Because I believe each and every one of us is pursuing excellence, greatness in some capacity as we all yearn to seek our, our deepest potential and purpose. And that's what my hope is today with my top takeaways from chasing uh, greatness. I, uh, I had a blast. I got to admit, I had a blast talking to these folks. And each and every week we deliver the Todd Durkin Impact Show podcast. Every Monday it drops and it, it fuels you throughout the week, hopefully. And um, my so my, my just hope for you today is that this one impacts you as much as any other one as well. Great conversations, deep conversations, some jaw-dropping stories, and some incredible, profound shares. I started back in episode 249 when I introduced this series to, like, what is greatness? And I had my definition of what greatness is, is it's tapping into one's true divine purpose and potential to live your best life despite adversity, setback, injury, challenge, loss, or failure so that you can ultimately discover peace, harmony, happiness, and fulfillment knowing that you did your best each and every day. That is greatness. So when we looked at these podcast episodes, my top takeaways, the first one was Drew Brees, episode 250 with Drew. And um, there's a lot of take takeaways I got from Drew. Obviously, I've been training Drew now for twenty over 20 years. Um, and uh, one of my top takeaways from episode 250 was when he talked about his time as a father with his kids. And I asked him about, you know, when you when you have the back of on the back of your your jerseys named Breeze, you've got some uh, added pressures. And he talked about his conversation with his son, Balin, and all he wanted to see from Balin was effort. That was it. That's all he cared about was effort and what you could put. It doesn't matter if you win or you lose, just put forth the effort. And I love that because it doesn't matter what the name on the back of the jersey is. Put your name, your kid's name on the back of your jersey. We have to continually control the controllables. And one thing that we all can control is effort. We can control preparation. We can, tr we can control how hard we train, who we train with. We can control the amount of energy we invest into a project. Effort is everything. Control the controllables. Effort, effort, effort. And I love that because that was his dad hat. And I love seeing Drew in the dad hat now. And one of the reasons why I wanted him on the show in the uh, Chasing Greatness series was because he had already established his greatness in his first career as a NFL uh, future Hall of Fame quarterback. But we also talked about his new venture as a broadcaster. And, uh, the one thing that's interesting in Drew trying to balance out his entrepreneurial pursuits with his family priorities was just weeks after we recorded the episode, Drew 
parted ways with NBC so he could focus on more time with his family and his other pursuits. The lesson I got from the episode and even the ensuing weeks after that is this. (laughs) Interesting enough is if you don't like something, you could always change it. Or if you like it, but it's taking up too much of your time, energy, money, or resources, you can change it. You have the ability to change if you want to change something. Drew made the decision to take a year off or some time off from his current situation and redefine what his future is going to look like. To me, that's awesome. So he shared and we shared in episode 250 with where he was at with his constant struggle with his entrepreneurial pursuits with some of his priorities. And to me, that's leading from the front, being authentic, being transparent. And uh, episode 250 was one of the ages because it was Drew, the uh, Drew Brees that most people don't know behind the scenes, which is the same Drew Brees that many people know in front of the camera is him sharing uh, his struggles as a family man, an entrepreneur, a businessman, and as a former athlete uh, on that. Keep leading from the front and redefine your future. And don't be held hostage by the situation that you're in. If you don't like it, you could always change it. You can always change it. Next episode, Chase Daniel, episode 251. And Chase is a one percenter, I called him. 14 years in the NFL, seven different teams. And I've trained Chase now for 14 years. And um, here's a couple of my takeaways, my top takeaways from what Chase Daniel uh, said in 251. You got to know your role. Work your tail off, prepare like you're the starter, and boost up your teammates. Boost up your teammates. Know your role. He said this, I quote, how can I bring intrinsic value to a company by utilizing my gifts and serving the mission? He talked about Coach Brandon Staley and his role with the starter, uh, unbelievable uh, quarterback, Justin Herbert. And how his role is to help him and his intrinsic value is to add to the success of the Los Angeles Chargers. I almost said San Diego Chargers, still ingrained. Um, And he said, you got to play well when called upon. When your number's called, how do you respond? When the opportunity comes, it's going to come. My friend today, listening in right now, your opportunity is coming. Be prepared when it comes. Keep preparing. And lastly, he talked about priorities like Drew, and they've played together. They've trained together for Chase, 14 years they've trained together, uh, but priorities. And Chase talked about in the first nine years of his career, it was about football and becoming a starter in the league, and he thought that was success. And then when you have kids, and you have kids out there, you know what happens when you have kids. It shifts your priorities. It becomes about your kids. And I love that Chase talked about in his evolution as a man, as a husband, as a father, how he shifted his priorities and his, his kids shifted that and that he gets as much or more now in his life as a father and he called a fatherhood over football. Football now is still a priority, but fatherhood first. And we need more great fathers. And Chase is really uh, prioritizing that role within his family. So I asked you the questions. Where are your priorities at? As a mom or a dad? As a husband or a wife? How can we do better? How can I do better? It's a question I always ask myself. How can I be better as, as, a, as a husband to my wife, Melanie? How can I do a better job serving her? What can I do? Not what can she do for me? How can I serve her more? Right, men? Right, fellas? How can we serve our wives better? Ladies, how can we be, be better to support our, our husbands? Because together, if we can serve each other, then great. As a father or mother, where are your priorities at? Where your priorities are at today which are the ones that matter most? How do you define your core values? <laughs> to me, it's honesty, integrity, trust, and hard work. If you break trust and you break integrity, that's not someone I want to be associated with or something I want to be associated with. Interesting enough, right before uh, greatness, chasing greatness, I talked about impact 2.0. I live with integrity. Do the right thing. T, we bookended it with T, trust. If you don't trust your teammates, if you don't trust your spouse, if you don't trust your your owner or your boss, your leader, your GM, guess what? You've lost your team. You've lost whatever. 
And to me, when you can define your priorities and you can live by them, like truly live by them. I'm not saying you define them and then you just go with through, through, like those are the non-negotiables that when all of a sudden they're in jeopardy, you have to stand by them at all costs. And Chase Daniels episode 251 at the meat of it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> Episode 252, my man, Daniel Slamarena Camarena. <laughs> it was just two weeks after his Tommy John surgery that he actually came in here and did the podcast. Why? Because the week before that, he came in and said, hey, TD, I, you know, I, he comes in with his brace and, and uh, shares the story. I said, Daniel, I'm in the middle of, of recording a uh, Chasing Greatness series. He's like, well, <laughs> I'm not too great right now. I said, absolutely, you are. Because greatness is defined by your setbacks. Greatness is defined by when you're hurt, when you're down, when you feel like you can't contribute to your organization or your team or life anymore, how you keep going when you are in the arduous process of rehab and PT and trying to do everything you can nutritionally, supplementally, what you're doing to chase greatness when no one's watching. And there's not a packed house of 40,000 people after you hit a Grand Slam home run and make history less than a year prior. And here you are, you're still chasing greatness. That's what I loved about Daniel Slamarena Camarena's episode. Even more so, what I loved about that is I started training Daniel here at Fitness Quest 10 in the roots where I do this podcast right now when he was a kid, (laughs) now just shy of 30 years old and 10 years of playing baseball. Guys, he played pro baseball for almost a decade before getting a call up less than a year ago. Daniel talks about this in the good times and the bad. Iron sharpens iron. Who's sharpening you and who are you sharpening? Iron sharpens iron. DC talks about the importance of habits. (laughs) I think this is a commonality of everyone that spoke here in this is habits. And when you're a pro athlete or or you want to train like a pro athlete, you got to have the great habits before you become a pro athlete. Let me repeat. You got to have great habits before you become the successful entrepreneur, before you become the successful uh, cinematographer, videographer, like my man B. Bourne's here, like any of the people who I work with. You got to have habits before you become the man or woman you you become or want to become. You got to have your habits dialed in. Can you feel me on that? Dial in your habits today. And we don't complain. We don't explain. We find solutions. DC, my man, episode 252 was a classic. Daniel Camarena will be back. There's a book called The Obstacle is the Way. If you have not read it yet, read it. Have you ever thought for yourself that you do your best work when your back's against the wall? Sometimes I get this weird feeling like sometimes when the adversity is down, I do my best work. Why does it have to be that way that when you're facing adversity, you have a pressing deadline to get something done is when you do your best work. You don't want to get used to it. But every now and then, when the pressure's on, you got to respond. Listen, my friend, today as you listen into this recap, you don't have to be going through pain to define your purpose. You don't have to be going through injury or setback to really discover your deepest and best self. You don't have to face significant setback. But when you do, remember the story and journey of Daniel Camarena, and don't complain, don't explain, just find solutions. Episode 253, Brett Rippon. Brett Rippon, fourth year NFL quarterback with the Denver Broncos, and man, oh man, was this eye-opening. Here's a guy who was all everything in high school and college, threw for like 10,000 yards in high school, like 10,000 yards in college, And he went undrafted. And here he is going into his fourth year in the NFL. And he openly, transparently talks about how lonely he was last year. How his mind wasn't right. He's a fourth year NFL quarterback. And people are like, oh man, that guy's lucky. He's a a quarterback in the NFL. And here he is saying, I'm lonely. Comparing himself to other quarterbacks around the NFL. All, all the old comparison game. Yeah, that all of us play because you're looking at the IG or the FB or TikTok or anything else you're looking at saying, I'm not as good as him. I'm not as good as her. All the other BS you feed yourself that you're not as good. Stop that now. I can't tell you the number of calls I do coaching people virtually or live about how you don't believe you're as good as you actually are. You're playing the comparison game and you're telling yourself what you 
don't have versus what you do have. Let me remind you today, based on the Brett Rippins episode 253 of who you are and what you're made of and that you're born for right now, this time today, as you listen to my words come out of it, because let, listen what, God doesn't make mistakes. God's got a plan. And, and Rip talks about this. You got to trust God's timing, even when it's not our own timing, because we all want it to happen faster than it normally does. It's always slower than we want, but we got to put our trust in God. When in the good times and the bad, we, get, we tend to get a little complacent in the good times and we get a little desperate in the bad times. Let's place our faith in God. And Rip also talked about mindset. I love this quote right here. Great quote. What separates good from great mentally is when your desire to be great exceeds the desire to not fail. Let me repeat that. What separates good from great mentally is when your desire to be great exceeds the desire to not fail. That means we got to put our mind on constantly desiring to be our best, to not being afraid to fail. And that comes back to habits. And Rip talks about his habits, shares his routines for training, hydration, mindset, his off the field habits. And when he's watching TV, is he stretching and is he listening to the right stuff? Is he surrounding himself with the right people? And here's what I loved. Rip says, greatness is chasing failure. <laughs> Button up. <laughs> greatness is chasing failure, not being afraid to fail. It sounds rhetorical, but my friend, why do we spend too much time worried about failing? It's okay. Don't worry what other people are going to think if you don't make it. Don't worry about what people are going to think of how you look. I'm too overweight. I'm I, All these excuses that we make that you're not smart enough, you're too old, or you're too young. It's all stuff that ultimately holds us back, and that's mindset. It's fear that ultimately robs us of being our best self. So let me ask you a question. Are you afraid to fail today? Are you afraid that what are they going to think if I do this and it doesn't work out? What if I make this move and I fail? Stop today. As you listen to this right now, this recap right now, is it because what other people might think? Are you not living God's purpose and plan for you because you're too worried about other people? Are you going to step into your destiny right now, your destiny, your purpose, and say, this is what I'm designed to do. This is it. Fear often cripples us from not taking action. How about shifting that? Instead of asking, what if I fail? How about you ask, what if I succeed? I have a sign in my home office that says, today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. What if I fail turns to what if I succeed? Put your mind on success. Try this language right now as you're walking, as you're working out, or you're driving. Repeat after me. What if I succeed? What if I make it? What if that really does become a reality? What if I attract the money I'm worth because of my hard work? What if I can give away the money I want because I earned and manifested the money I dreamt of? What if I succeed? What if I do this? What if my dreams do become a reality? What if the God-sized dreams that are driving my purpose do come true? And by God, they will. Thank you, Brett Rippin, because episode 253, that's what Rip's all about. And that's what I extract out of it. These are my takeaways from episode 253. Whew! 254, Zion Clark, Zion Clark, wow, Zion Clark grew up in foster care for his first 17 years of his life, in those 17 years, Zion went to eight different foster homes, suffered physical abuse, mental abuse, and starvation, Zion Clark was born without legs, and now, He's an elite actor, athlete, musician. He's a Guinness Book of World Record holder. And boy, oh boy, did I get some great stuff out of that podcast, including he had his brand new puppy here who was running around here and he was on fire. And the love that Zion had for his, his new running mate was awesome. But here's what I get. Dream big. 
don't let any physical limitation hold you back because when Zion Clark was in high school and he didn't win a match, someone asked him why he didn't quit. He said he kept going back because he had two friends on the team. He wasn't winning. We always place it on winning and losing now. And Zion said, because I had two friends on the team, I wasn't going to quit on. And he was going back because of the camaraderie of his buds. Do you know the power of one friend can make in your life? Do you know what you can make in your life, the difference you can make in someone else's life by being a friend to someone who that you need to lift up and encourage and acknowledge and praise? Today, your words, you share this episode and someone listens to it and it saves their life. That's why we do what we do. I mean, Zion Clark, he says, be greater than, be greater than. <laughs> Zion Clark, so you know, has dreams of making the Paris 2024 Olympics and Paralympics in wrestling and wheelchair racing, respectively. Wow. Uh, Zion's mother, Kimberly Hawkins, says something really, really profound. If they're going to look at you, make sure they remember your name, Zion. If they're going to look at you, make sure they remember your name. My friend, with all the stuff that goes on in your head, know this, you are born to be special. And whether you have two arms or two legs or you don't, whether you got physical or mental stuff going on, you are born to do significant things. Make sure they remember your name. Gil Donahue says this in Zion Clark's book. You have to do things that other people don't want to do. At times, they don't want to do them. And Zion Clark is living that. He's testimony to that. And lastly, I would say about Zion Clark, an amazing episode in 254, is you got to be driven by purpose. And when I ask Zion what his future looks like, because he's a young man in his 20s, be driven by purpose. Zion Clark wants to change the foster care system in America. Guys, here's a young man who wants to change the foster care system in America. Now, if there's ever anyone who was ordained to change the system, it's someone who spent 17 years in the foster care system who was abused, who lived in eight different homes, who understands every aspect of hopping from home to home and then found a mother, Kimberly, who loved him unconditionally and took him in and empowered him. And now Zion Clark, with millions of followers, is doing amazing things in this universe. His mission, his purpose, is to change the foster care system. Thank you, Zion Clark, for never giving up. Thank you for doing what you do. And I can't wait to watch you in the Olympics in 2024. And then, episode 255. First Lieutenant Riley Compton. U.S. Marine, 2021 Marine Corps overall female athlete of the year, and she's on the Team USA bobsled development team. Woo wow. What did I get out of this episode? Well, I got to tell you something. I did that episode on a Friday afternoon, and when I was leaving the gym here, Walking out late on that Friday afternoon, I got to tell you, I was walking a little taller, a little prouder. Pure patriotism and pride came across me knowing that this darn future of America is in great hands with people like First Lieutenant Riley Compton. I couldn't be more proud to be an American that day, listening to a woman talk about how she went from a college softball player into the U.S. Marine Corps, married a, a fellow Marine who's, who has been on multiple de deployments, her husband, and she epitomizes what a leader is all about, what an American is all about. I left so excited that day to go home and talk to my daughter, McKenna, who's 14 years old, and tell her, you want to follow a superstar? You want to follow someone, a role model, not on Instagram or TikTok or Snap? You follow First Lieutenant Riley Compton. That's a role model that every woman needs to follow. That's someone who's doing it the right way. That's the kind of role model I want my daughter to follow. Man, oh man, played college sports, wants to serve our country, driven athlete, incredible leader. Man, so proud. 
so proud of Riley and, and what she's doing, serving the country and doing great things. And um, lastly, when it comes to, to that episode, personally, what I loved about that, and here's a young, vivacious woman doing great things for our country, for the people she leads, hundreds of other Marines. I love the way she talked about her dad, her father. Mm. I loved hearing how she would sneak down at night and watch TV after her mom put her down because her dad was down there watching Navy SEAL training on the History Channel and the Navy SEALs were training and dad was down there watching and she, she would go down there and snuggle with her dad. And then she'd talk about her dad. You know, she'd do softball with him and he'd, he'd be in the backyard and he'd play with her. He spent time with her. All I have to say is, well done, well done, Mr. Compton. Well done. I love that. This world needs more great dads. And I could see how First Lieutenant Riley Compton had a great father figure in her life and what she's doing now. And thank you, First Lieutenant Riley Compton, episode 255, because not only is your future bright, this country's future is bright with people like you in it. Thank you very much. My friend, today, as we wrap this episode up, I ask you the question, What makes you great? What makes you great? Seven episodes to get into your head, get into your heart, fire you up, make you train at another level, eat at a whole different level, learn from some of the world's best athletes, entrepreneurs, service men and women. What makes you great? So as I share a few questions and thoughts on a recap of those, think about this for yourself right now. What makes you great? Your ability to dream and persevere? What do you want? What are you pursuing? Is it your ability to overcome adversity so that when you get hurt, when you suffer some setback, things don't go your way? Are you facing a tough situation now? If so, keep going. That's great. Is it your ability to sacrifice what you want for what you need to do? Perhaps for three months, six months, nine months, a year or more, you're going to have to sacrifice what you want for what you need to do because you're going to put food on the table. You're going to protect your family. You're going to protect yourself. That might mean sacrificing parties, getting the car you want, but that's called delayed gratification. And last I check, if you're chasing greatness, sometimes you got to delay some gratification. Is it your ability to have the discipline to do what needs to be done? Because all of the greats who I've interviewed all have the ability to have the discipline to do what needs to get done. Is it your desire to grow and work on you? Because many times in those episodes, they talked about mentors, how they listened to podcasts. Heck, Brett Rippon talked about how he listened nonstop to the Impact Show during his difficult time. Have mentors. Continue to read and listen to things like this. The more you learn, the more you earn. The more you learn, the more you earn. Warren Buffett, Buffett reads five hours a day. You're like, I don't have five hours a day. Well, either does Warren Buffett. Figure it out. Find a way if you want to. Bill Gates, book a week. Mark Cuban, three hours a day. If they do it, you can do it as well. The greats have the ability to have faith in their talents, even when no one else believes them. Have faith in your talents. Seeing it before it actually happens. Playing the game a thousand times before you play the game. Get that mind right. Play the game a thousand times. See it, feel it, hear the crowd. Smell the the refreshment stand. Smell the dew on the grass after a thunderstorm in September and October and November when all of a sudden you're coming out of the tunnel and you see and hear the band. All of it. You visualize it. You image it. Everything. You capture it. And you play that game a thousand times before you play that game. The greats focus on being their best so they can be great when their best is needed. Practice the mundane. Do the work. Put the time into ongoing learning because the process is the key. You heard it over and over. The greats are going to embrace the process. Today, my encouragement to you, the great one, you, 
Yes, you, I'm talking to you, is to tune out the naysayers. You know those other middle school boys and girls, high school, college? Oh, those at your work? The naysayers, your teammates who are naysayers? No, 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 no. Not today. Tune them out. No more to the naysayers. Don't give them your precious time and energy. Don't give them that power to do that. Tune them out and stop listening to the people who aren't lifting you up because all of us need to be cheerleaders to someone else. And all of us need cheerleaders in our life as well. The great ones use their time right. How can you do a better job using your time right? Stop doing dumb things. If there's dumb things that you're doing, cut it out. If there's habits that, you're, that aren't feeding your soul, your spirit, and the habits that they're going to help you get you to where you want to go to be great, then it's only up to you. Not your mom, not your dad, not your coworker, not your spouse, not your son or your daughter, but you to pick it up and do what you deserve to do. And remember, the greats remember who they are and where they came from in the good times and the bad, when they're up and when they're down, when they failed and when they've succeeded, when they've had a setback or a major victory. Get up, keep going, have grit, have resilience because the great ones do that. The great ones do it. If I could share this today as we wrap up this, the great ones, the great coaches, the great mentors, the great therapists, the great entrepreneurs, the great athletes, they all have coaches. They all have therapists, sometimes all three. <laughs> they have a network of people to support you. And keep going, keep going and doing what's necessary. The great ones have the desire to give back and make this world a better place. It's not about the money. It's not about the fame. It's about becoming the best version of you. Today, decide to be great. And my hope that these last seven episodes or so about chasing greatness has given you the fire, the inspiration from the inside out to be your absolute best self. What's the greatness inside of you? Can you please answer that? And I please, I welcome you to share your answer with me and your family. You can send it to me. You can share it with me. You can video. I want to know you. What's the greatness inside of you? Continually recite it over and over. Write it down in your journal. Say it. Remind yourself. Because if you don't, no one will. What's the greatness inside of you? What are you chasing? Yes, chase success. That's okay. But also chase to be significant. Chase success and significance. How much time you got left here on earth? How much? Do you know? No. So let's make sure that today, today, right now, the greatness that is inside of you, you create it today, you manifest it today, and you share it today. And don't say, when I get my degree, when I open my business, when I do this, no. None of that's going to qualify you like today when you take action, that you commit today, you recommit to being your best self today. And I want to know, what are you going to do? And when are you going to do it? Today is your day to be great, to be great. Keep chasing greatness every single day and I'll do the same. Until next time, train hard, eat right, live inspired and be great.